welcome to digital design classes uh, my name is vinuta today uh, is in the previous lecture we have seen how to design where, when the boolean expression is given how to simplify it using manual method and also how to simplify it using kmap method in the previous lectures we have seen the kmap examples uh, for two variables and three variables so today we'll be discussing the kmap for four variables how to Uh, simplify when we have a four uh, four variable uh, boolean expression and also uh, to <coughs> uh, derive the prime implicance for a given expression uh, before that we need to understand what do you mean by prime implicance then we also going to uh, look at the don't care conditions uh, so in this i will discuss in detail what do you mean by don't care conditions how to represent them on the kmap and uh, what we should consider those don't care conditions either 0 or 1 let us start with the design of four variable kmap so before we start with the four variable kmap as we have discussed in the previous lecture that three variable kmap when a boolean expression is given in the form of sop sum of product uh, expression then how to simplify that we have seen now if the boolean expression is given in a non canonical form how can we solve that okay that uh, we'll see one example before we moving to uh, moving to the four variable kmap let us look at this variable uh, look at this uh, expression f1 equal to observe this carefully it is not a canonical form because in canonical form every uh, term every term will contain all the variables all uh, different forms of all the variables now if you observe this we have only two variables b is missing and in this term c is missing this term the form of c is missing this is a main term yes all of these terms are not representing the main terms now what is the next task so how can i represent this on the kmap i cannot so because in kmap we have a grids and every grid represent one main term so now what we have to do is what is the next step we have to convert this into the canonical form the method is very simple what we have to do is we have to identify every term which is not in the form of main term then we have to convert that into a main term while doing so one term might be converted into two main terms that is possible let us see how can we do that now i am just going to take one example of a dash c let me take a dash c a dash c is a term of two variables now i want to convert that to the uh, main terms with three variables now so if i write it this way does the value of a dash c changes or will it remain same think and tell because we already know that according to the boolean algebra uh, we know that b plus b dash anything plus with its uh, complement form will always result into one i anything multiplied anything added with 1 will always result to x this this value so the value of this is not going to change but now when i simplify this a dash c or uh, let me write it in a sequence a dash b c plus a dash b dash c now if you look at now these two are representing main terms yes so that is what i say when we are having a term which is uh, not in the canonical form which is not representing any particular main term then we have to convert that into a main term similarly this term is now i have to convert into main term then this will get converted to two main terms and this will be again equivalent to two main terms so now if i have to write the overall converted form okay so now here 
what is missing? B is missing. So we will be getting two terms which is related. In one term we will be having B in a form. In another term we will be having a complement of B. That is A dash B dash C. So now these two terms belongs to this particular one term. Now similarly for this I can write what is missing in this A dash B C is missing C will be there so I have to write here two terms in one term C will be in its normal form in another term C will be in its complement form but A dash B will remain same C dash now these two terms are equivalent into one term these two mean terms now this I cannot change anything because it is already in the form of min term A B dash C. Again here A is missing. Now I can write it as A B C. Now A is in its normal form and then another term which is having A dash B C. Now I have to identify because we know that according to the uh, <coughs> idempotent laws x plus x is equals to x now we have to identify are there any are there any terms which are same yes a dash bc a dash bc a dash bc so now these if i consider them as x if i uh, add them all together i can write it in only one term rather than three times i can just write it in only once a dash bc now I am going to cover all other terms plus a dash b c dash plus a b dash c plus a b c now when any boolean expression is given in a non canonical form first we need to convert that back to the canonical form then we have to represent this using k map then we have to solve it then we have to simplify that now we have three variable came up then i need minimum of eight squares we have already seen yesterday how to draw a k map for three variables this is for a this is for bc here we have a dash a b dash c dash b dash c b c b c dash and this is this belongs to the mean term 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So now I need to identify the, uh, the mean term which, which belongs to this A dash BC. Where do I have? Here I have A dash and here I have BC. Mark it as 1. A dash B dash C. A dash B dash C. Mark this as 1. A dash B C dash. A dash uh, B C dash mark this as 1 A B dash C A B dash C mark this as 1 then A B C A B C now after this we got this K map so boolean expression converted boolean expression to min terms then the K map which is representing this particular boolean expression now once we have the K map and once we have marked all the ones and zeros on the k-map now the next next task is to minimize to minimize what is the uh, thing what is the steps we have to follow we have to identify the groups now here we have to identify the groups of maximum number of ones so now if I look at here it is so obviously looking at this um, that we can find the quad quad of ones yes so uh, whenever we are Solving using K map, we have to look for the largest group of ones. So the in this largest possible in this example is quad. Now, uh, are all the ones covered? No, there is still one. One is left. Then again, what is the largest group possible with this one? Is pair. So I have to do the pair for this. Now I have to find the <coughs> terms for each of the groups for this and for this group what is the term how to identify what are the adjacent uh, in the adjacent rows and columns which are the terms are getting eliminated i just have to identify that in this 
both the rows are covered. A is getting eliminated because A is changing its form. And in this, in these two columns, B is changing its form. So whatever is remaining is only C in its normal form. Then I now I have to find the term for this pair. So in this, A dash is staying constant in this row and C is changing its form and we have B which is constant. Then the term for this is A dash B. Then a simplified version of this Boolean expression which equals to these two terms odd together. So that is A dash B plus C. So this F1 after simplification it is going to look like this. So this is how we need to solve for any given problem. So the same problem we have seen, the similar problem we have seen with the three variable k map when it is expressed in the form of canonical form. Now when it is not expressed in the canonical form, the very simple thing what we need to do is we need to adjust each term to have all the uh, literals, all the variables in every term. Then once we have that, then we have to identify are there any duplicates, are there any duplicate um, terms, mean terms in a given expression, then we have to eliminate, we have to reduce it to one, uh, one term. Then after getting the final uh, expression or addition of all the mean terms, then we have to uh, draw the k-map. Then after the k-map, we have to simplify it by grouping of ones. I hope this is clear to you guys. We have seen uh, the three variable k map with multiple examples with the, when the Boolean expression is uh, uh, given in the form of canonical and when the expression is given in a non-canonical form, how to solve it. So now let us move towards the four variable k map. When we have a three variable k-map, we need eight, uh, th there will be eight mean terms. When we have four variable k-map, we will be having at least 16 mean terms. Then to represent this using k-map, four variable uh, expression into a k-map, we need 16 squares. So let us draw this. And here A, B and C, D. Okay. So <clears throat> we also know that the variables can be represented like the names of the variables can be anything. You can take A, B, C, D, W, X, Y, Z, whatever you want to represent it as. So here in this example I am taking it as A, B, C, D. Now this is again A dash, B dash, A dash, B, C dash, D dash, C dash, D, C, D, C, D dash. Now we know that okay, according to the rule of the k-map, we know that every adjacent column or every adjacent row must differ with only one variable. Okay? Only one variable can change its form. The same thing we have taken care while uh, like giving the uh, main terms to the columns. The same thing has to be taken care of while giving the mean terms to the uh, rows. Here I have to write AB. I cannot write here AB dash because if I write AB dash that there will be a change of two variables. But here it is the same thing what we have done with these two columns the same will apply here. AB dash. Now what are the min terms? What are the, these squares represent which min term? Let us look at this. 1, 2, 3. Then this is 4, 5, 6 and then 7. Now this is not 8. 8 is here because to adjust, okay, to adjust whether uh, to make sure each adjacent rows are differing with only one value. So that is why we have taken 8 here. Then 8, 
9, 10, 11. Then we have here 12, 13, 14, and 15. When we have four variables, then we'll be having the <coughs> mean terms which is equivalent to the decimals from 0 to 15. Okay. 16 values we are going to get that is from 0 to 15. Now once we have this skeleton, okay, now we have to, how to fill the k-map will remain same what we have discussed for 2 variable k-map or 3 variable k-map, the same thing we have to follow. Okay. I hope you understood what, how the skeleton is formed for this 4 variable k-map. Now let us look at the particular example and then how the grouping is taken care. <coughs> Example of four variable uh, Boolean expression which is expressed in terms of sum of product terms. Okay. If you look at this, this you need to identify what kind of expression they are given here. That is in the form of sum of product terms, SOP. Now again, here they have given A, B, C, D. So by looking at that, I need to understand that this is a four variable Boolean expression. If this is not given, then I have to look at the maximum value. What is the highest value? Based on that, I have to decide what kind of k-map k I need here. Whether the 3 variable k-map or 4 variable k-map. Now, if the value is exceeding 7, that means I need 4 variable k-map. If the values are below 7, then I need only 3 variable k-map. If the values are below 3, then I need only 2 variable k-map. I hope this is a very basic thing, you, are, you already have a grip over that. Now, what, what is the next step when it is given in the SOP form? What is the next step? We have the skeleton ready. So what we have to do? I just have to mark once whatever the mean term are specified in the expression. 0 is 1, 1, then 2, then we have 4, 5, 6, then we have 8, 9, then we have 12, 13, and 14. So, <coughs> then the remaining ones, I have covered all the mean terms which are producing high output as 1 on the k-map, then the remaining uh, squares I have to mark it with 0. Now, now the next task is of grouping. If you look at this, okay, we are uh, we can observe we have very large number of group here. Okay, so the group now the maximum group can be formed with this octet. Eight number of ones grouped together we call that group as octet. Four number of groups we call it as quad. Two number of groups, uh, two number of ones grouped together, we call it as pair. Now, here three ones are there. Can I group three ones? No. As I discussed in the previous lecture, we cannot group the odd number of ones. Or uh, we cannot group the number of ones which is not in the power of two. So, if there is another one I could have grouped. Because 4 is power of 2. But that is not possible. Now, can I group it in the form of pair? Yes, this is possible. And also this is possible. But according to the KMAP rules, what it says, we always have to look into the maximum possible grouping. Okay? Because in KMAP, while doing the grouping, the overlapping is possible. So that is why, is there any other than a bigger group than pair, is it possible with these ones? If you look at, like we have seen uh, in yesterday's example, that 
even these two columns are adjacent to each other by uh, <coughs> rotating method okay by rotating method like if i consider if i join these two together then i can consider these two columns are adjacent to each other okay by with that <coughs> thing in mind so what i can do is rather than making pair so it is always better to have a larger group and the quad is larger than pair so let us group it this way and definitely this also can be formed as a quad these two ones and these two ones so finally how many groups do we have three groups one with octet this one uh, with quad and another group with another quad while doing so i need to make sure all the ones are uh, grouped at least in one group all the ones are there in at least one group i cannot leave any one because that is not fitting into any group no i have to consider all the ones only then my k map grouping will be over so once i have identified all the groups now i have to find i have to identify <coughs> the term which representing that particular group so when it is a quad okay when it is a uh, sorry octet when it is a octet then it is going to give us the term with only one implicant so what is it here in this uh, all of these rows b is also getting complemented a is also getting complemented so a and b both are getting eliminated now the in these two columns what is the variable which is getting eliminated that is d and d dash are getting eliminated so what is left to it is only c dash so whenever we have a maximum number of groups we have a term with a minimum number of uh, variables so that is what is the basic motive behind using the key map so now if i look at this particular group okay so here i have to look at these two uh, rows and these two columns so in these two columns c is getting changed its form so what left is d dash in this b is getting changed its form what is left with a dash so this term is going to be a dash d dash now similarly i have to identify the term for this in this a is changing its form what is left is b and in these two again c is changing its form what is left is d dash so now once i have all of these terms what i have to do i just have to or them together so the final <coughs> simplified version the simplified boolean expression for this given uh, <coughs> boolean function is going to be c dash plus a dash d dash plus b d dash so <coughs> this is how we are going to solve using four variable k map it is much similar to what we have uh, discussed in the earlier videos that is three variable k map and two variable k map but here there is a possibility of getting uh, octet because we have 16 squares and based on the uh, problem statement given we have we always have to look for the bigger group whichever is possible and again the group has to be in the form of 2 to the power okay so otherwise i cannot group if there are only 6 okay can i group them no because 6 is not uh, not in the power of 2 so that is why we have to always look for the and uh, we have to make sure like there are no redundant okay even after getting this if if i if there is a chance to uh, resolve this if there is a chance uh, still more simplification okay we should not uh, uh, get the boolean expression which is again still possibility of still more simplification okay so that is why we need to make sure there are no redundant groups that means the uh, we already covered these two and again i cannot make sure because yes i can do that here also i can take this so but all of these ones are already uh, covered in one group okay so that is the reason we have to make sure that there is no redundancy 
and we always have to put uh, group the ones into the maximum number of groups possible. I hope this is clear to you. Now similarly, now we have uh, seen an example when uh, the expression is mentioned in the form of canonical. Now we will see another example when the expression is not mentioned in the form of canonical. That means we, have, we are going to see non-canonical form expression. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nine, fifteen. Let me copy the problem statement. We have a dash b dash c plus b dash c b dash plus a dash b c b dash plus a b dash c dash. Yes. Now, can you tell me, is it in the canonical form? No, because all the terms are not presented as a min term because here to uh, get this as a min term of four variable we d is missing in this term a is missing and in that term again d is missing okay. so what we have done with the non canonical format when, when it is given for the three input variable what we have done in the beginning of this lecture the same thing we have to follow okay. so another method rather than just uh, uh, adding and simplifying the entire expression. Another method directly uh, we can mark the ones on the k map. Okay. Now I have to identify which are the squares representing a dash b dash c. And we have also seen few uh, simplification while, while simplifying it. If I have a pair, if I have a pair, only one variable will be eliminated. In this, only one variable will be eliminated. That means this term now belongs to one pair. Now, if I have a variable with only two variables, that means I will be having quad. Okay? That means that particular term will be representing a quad. Now, I have to look for a pair which is representing this a dash b dash c. Okay? So, basically in this, what is eliminated? D is eliminated. Then, there will be two terms that is a dash b dash c d and a dash b dash c d dash. Let me just quickly write it here. a dash b dash c d then a dash b dash c d dash. Okay. These two terms together when I simplify these two terms then I will be getting this. Now I have to mark once in these two wind terms. <coughs> Where do I get this? a dash b dash c d is here. A dash B dash C D dash is here. Similarly, if I have to look at this, then it is uh, it's going to be A B dash C D dash A dash B dash C D dash. So where do I get this? A B dash is here. Then C D dash is here. Then A dash B dash C D dash. It is already covered. Similarly, that one term is already in the form of min term. I just have to identify a dash b is here, then c d dash is here. Now the last term d is missing. It is going to be a b dash. Okay, do I have this a b dash c dash d? C dash d is here, and a b dash c dash d dash. I think <coughs> okay. I think there is uh, another term is missing in this. Okay, sorry. This is C dash. Okay, C dash D is this. I am C dash. Okay, I, this is not there, but yes. This is what we are going to get. Uh, 
See, I am looking for a particular example because we have, there is another method I want to explain to you. That is why I am taking a particular example in this case. So now, do you see any uh, octal or do you see any quad here? No. Just by looking at this, I cannot say that there is a quad present in this. Okay. But by rolling method or by rotating method, I, I can identify a quad here. Because, see, these two are adjacent to each other and also these two are adjacent to each other. Okay. Now, if you look at these corner ones, Okay, that means they are definitely adjacent to each other. Then I can form a quad. Now this is paired with this. And again this is paired with this. And these two are paired with this to get a quad. Are you getting my point? Yes, by rolling method. Yes, by rolling method. I can even combine all the corners, if all the corners are ones, into a quad. So I am getting a quad by combining all of these. Yes. Now, how can I cover this one? Is there any, uh, what is the maximum number of ones possible? Okay. So don't worry, wherever one is not there, it is by default understood as zero. Yes. What is the maximum number of ones I can group with this one? Is there any quad possible? If here I had one, this quad was possible. If here I had one, this quad was possible. But no, no quad is possible. So what I can do is, I can just have a pair. The same with this one. Okay? Here I don't have one to get this quad. But, and here also I don't have one to get this quad. So I just can form a pair. Only maximum for uh, to cover this one, I can have maximum of a pair. So now, the next task is identify <coughs> identify the terms for each uh, group, each group of ones. Now for this this quad, okay, I have to look at these two columns and I have to look at these two rows to identify which are the variables which are getting eliminated. So here we have C is getting eliminated. What is left with is D dash. And in this A is getting eliminated. What is left with is B dash. So I am getting a term B dash D dash. Now for this pair, okay, when it is a pair with the four variable came up, only one variable will be eliminated. And I'll get a term with three uh, inputs. So what is getting eliminated is B. Okay, B is changing its form from B dash to B. So A dash C D dash. A dash C D dash is the term for this particular pair. Now similarly, how to identify the term for this pair? So here D is changing its form. So what is left with is C dash and a B dash. It is going to be A B dash C dash. Now the next thing is all, all these terms that will be your simplified Boolean expression for the given uh, expression. Okay? When the given expression is in non-canonical form, this is how we need to proceed. One method we can simplify that to get all the terms in canonical form. In the, in the form of mean term, what we have done in the beginning of this class. Or else, we can directly follow and we can directly start putting ones for each term uh, which is having lesser number of inputs, uh, either we will be putting uh, two ones or three, uh, four ones. So now, this is going to be A dash, B dash, C dash plus a dash c d dash plus b dash d dash. I hope you got this example. So this is another example. In this we are going to cover when the expression is mentioned in a non-canonical form and when we have once the rolling, the rolling is happening in both the ways, horizontal and vertical. So <coughs> Like this, 
how to get the maximum number of ones, how to group the maximum number of ones. So, <clears throat> I hope this concept is clear to you. Now, now there is another term. Okay? So, till now we have come across this term, but uh, I have not used that specific name given to that. That is called as prime implicance. What do you mean by prime implicance? Prime implicants are nothing but these terms are called as prime implicants. Okay? Some of the prime implicants will be, uh, again we are going to group them as essential prime implicants and uh, regular prime implicants. Okay? To understand what do you mean by essential prime implicant, uh, we I have to take another particular example. So let me start with that example. is very straightforward and it's very easy. So let us do that first. We have a skeleton of k map, core variable k map and we also have all the uh, <coughs> main terms. So 2, 1 is there, 0 is there, 2, then we have 3, then we have 5, 7, then 8, 9, 10, then 11, then 13 and we have so now, yes. Now, what do you mean by prime implicant? The first question is, what do you mean by prime implicant? Prime implicant is the term we are getting after combining the maximum number of ones is the prime implicant. So till now, whatever the terms we got and whatever the terms we have odd and we said that uh, that is the simplified version of your uh, Boolean expression. So, all the terms are nothing but they are also called as prime implicants. Now, just to understand what is the essential prime implicants, we are looking at this example. Now, there are multiple possibilities. When we have a K-map and when we get the uh, simplified solution for a given Boolean expression through the K-map, there is possibility that uh, we can arrive at multiple solutions. And all the solutions will be uh, correct solutions only. Okay. I cannot say that this is the correct one and this is not correct. If I am getting more than one solutions, all the solutions will be correct. So I just have to choose one of them as my final solution. Now, when I say that, what exactly I mean and in what cases I will be getting multiple solutions, that is what we will be looking at this. Now here, Again, as we have seen in the previous example, see here I can form a quad, here I can form a quad, here I can form a quad, okay, here I can form a quad, here it is possible, here it is possible, like multiple possibilities I can see in this schema, okay. So what is my task is, I have to find all the groups which are covering all ones. Okay. While doing so, I again need to make sure that there are no redundants. Like all, uh, I am forming a group of ones which are already covered in other groups. I should not do that. Okay. So now, if I look at, okay, so here there are multiple, for this one, 
there are multiple possibilities. Okay? I can cover this using this square. Okay? Or I can cover this using this square. Okay? Similar with this, I can cover with this square. Yes? And for this also, I can cover, that, that can be covered in this quad or this quad. Same for this. I, it can be covered in this quad or even with the, this quad. Okay? But there are few ones, if you observe, that can be covered in only one groups. Okay? For example, this. So what is the possibility for this? As we have seen in the immediate previous expe uh, example, so that can be grouped. with all corner ones because even all corner ones are adjacent to each other. So is there any possible grouping with this for this one? No. Then whatever the implicant, whatever the product term we are getting for this group is nothing but a prime implicant because for this one, okay, for this one there is only one prime impli one, uh, implicant is possible and that prime implicant must be present in my final solution. Okay? Such prime implicants we are going to call it as essential prime implicants. Okay? So now let us look at is there any other one which is uh, only one group is possible for that one like this. Okay? For this. What is the maximum grouping possible is again quad. Okay? So... <coughs> Uh, wherever we don't have ones, that is by default is zero. Now, for this, only one quad possible, that is this. Is there any other maximum grouping? Like maximum means any other quad or any other bigger than quad is possible for this one? No. Again, whatever the implicant, whatever the prime implicant I'm getting for this group is also essential prime implicant. Okay? So now let us, let me write whatever the group uh, uh, <coughs> implicants we are getting for this. So I am going to just write it as F equal to. So what is the prime implicant I am getting for this? Okay, I have to look at these two rows and these two columns. In this C is getting eliminated, we are getting D dash. And in this uh, A is getting eliminated, we are getting B dash. So the prime implicant is going to be B dash D dash. Okay. And what is the prime implicant, essential prime implicant, which is uh, represented using this quad is A is getting eliminated, C is getting eliminated, so this is BD. These two are essential prime implicants. Okay? Now, uh, maybe when we go ahead and solve this entire problem, you will understand what exactly mean by essential prime implicants. Now, what are left is this, this and this one. Okay. So again, there is possibility that forming a pair of this, but again, we have, we always have to look into the maximum number of grouping possible. Okay. So with this, forget about pair. I just have to look at the quad because quad is possible to cover this one. Okay. So now, let me cover this one using this quad. While doing so, even this one is covered. Okay. So now, only one one is left with. Okay. So this one is, again, I can cover using this quad or I can cover with this quad. Okay. So let me, as an example, let me cover this with this quad. Okay. Now I have to write, I have to get the prime implicants for these two grouping. Okay. This one quad and this is another quad. So what is that? In this quad, all the... Um, <coughs> columns are covered. So what is left will be A B dash. Let me write it a little more nearby. So that B dash B dash plus B D plus. Okay. These are the essential prime implicants. Now I am going to write A B dash plus C D. If I include all these three ones into these groupings, then I may be getting this as expression. Now, we have already seen there are multiple possibilities. Okay? Now, rather than doing grouping like this, this quad, okay? if I do the grouping like this, 
to cover this one and this one. And if I do the grouping like this, I will be getting different duplicates. Okay, different simplified version. So let me write back. So what is the for this quad? Okay, we'll be getting uh, A is changing its form. Here D is changing its form. B dash C. I will be getting B dash C. And for this quad, okay. So B is changing its form A, and then C is changing its form D. I will be getting as A D. So this is another variation. But these two are essential prime implicants. They have to be there. So I'm just writing plus here. That means they are still. Uh, this is odd with these two terms. Yes. So this is this is the way to simplify. When there is a possibility of, uh, there is like possibility of grouping your ones into multiple groups, then we will be getting multiple solutions. Then we have to identify. The first important thing is I have to identify the essential prime implicants. Okay. So here actually we are having uh, <coughs> two essential prime implicants and then four uh, prime implicants. Okay. From that, I can do the uh, multiple combinations to get multiple solutions. Okay? So, if I take again one this group and another one this group, okay? I will be getting different solution. Okay? And one this group, another this group, I will be getting different solutions. Okay? So, what is the basic thing I need to understand here is, I need to make sure all the ones are covered into at least one group. And... I have to identify the prime implicants which cannot be replaced, which has to be present in the this. So in this example, these are the prime implicants, and these are the uh, sorry, these are the essential prime implicants, and these are the prime implicants which we have alternatives. If, if you want to use use, or if you want to eliminate, or if you want to replace them with the other prime implicants, you can do that. Yes, I hope it is clear uh, what do you mean by prime implicants and how to identify the prime implicants. The essential prime implicant is the implica prime implicant where there is only uh, the one is covered where that one is not possible in any other grouping. Okay? So for uh, the first one B dash D dash, this one is covered with as B dash D dash. And not, uh, there is no other prime implicant which is covering this particular one. Similar with this one. This one is covered with only one prime implicant that is BD. There is no other possibility for this one. There is no other prime implicant possible which is covering this one. So, that is how we need to identify the essential prime implicants and prime implicants. <coughs> Now, we will look into the another example, something called, we have something called don't care condition. So, in some of the situations, what happens is, only few of the inputs will be possible. Now, for example, I want to convert my <coughs> uh, binary to decimal or decimal to binary. Then, how many values are possible for decimal? That is 0 to 9. Only 10 values are possible. But if I use 3 input uh, Boolean expression, okay, can I cover all of these 10, uh, 10 uh, possibilities? No. So I need minimum of 4 input Boolean expression. Okay? But with 4 input Boolean expression, I will be getting 16 possibilities. But for this example, I need only 10 possibilities, the first 10 possibilities. The remaining 6 are, uh, like, I, I don't care, I don't care whatever the values for the remaining 6 values, uh, my, my system or my circuit is producing whatever the output for the remaining 6 values for uh, this uh, 4 combinations. So, that is why we call a uh, few um, input combinations okay for few input combinations we 
call them as don't care conditions. That is because either those input combinations will never occur in my system or I don't care whatever the output which is generated for that particular input combination. Because what I am looking at is uh, the input combinations which are producing ones or zeros. Okay? Few input combinations, whatever the output, whether it produces zero or whether it produces one, I am not interested in that output. Okay? In such cases, we call the remaining six input combinations as don't care conditions. Okay? So now, we already know when uh, the input is in the SOP format, where to put ones and where to put zeros. Now we have to understand when the few uh, input conditions are given in don't care conditions, how to represent that and then whether I have to consider it as one or I have to consider it as zero. That I have to decide based on the uh, simplification. Uh, while doing the simplification, I have to decide whether that has to be considered as one or zero. So let us see an example for this don't care condition. While giving the don't care uh, problems, they will mention okay, what are the inputs where we have to consider them as don't care. So let me take this as an example. 1, 3, 7, 11, 15. Okay. And there is another function called D, which is equal to the summation of 0, 2, 5. That means these three inputs are in don't care condition. Okay. So now, let us draw the k-map for this. conditions I cannot put them as ones on my uh, k-map. I cannot also put them as zeros because if I put them as one the uh, always my system should produce the output high for these min terms but that is not the case and if I put them as zeros then my system my circuit should always produce zero for these min terms that is also not the case. Then what are we going to do? Let me first put ones in these for these mean terms. <coughs> that is uh, one, and then we have three, then we have seven, then we have eleven, and then fifteen. Okay. So now, all other terms. Okay, till now when we get only this equation, uh, after marking all the ones, all the remaining squares we have marked with zeros. But here the situation is different. Here another condition is given that these particular inputs I need to consider them as don't care. Okay. So as I have discussed earlier, these don't cares, I cannot put them as 1. I cannot also consider them as 0. So what do we do? We use another term called x, another uh, marking. Okay. On the k-map, we don't use 0 or 1 for that. Don't care conditions, we use x for that. So now I have to put x here in case of mean term 0, again in case of mean term 2, again in case of mean term 5. Okay? Now rest all I have to fill with zeros. Okay? When the don't care conditions are given, this is how we are going to draw the k-map. So all the mean terms which are mentioned in the uh, SOP format, uh, first I have to mark them as 1. And all the don't care, uh, all the min terms which are provided in the don't care condition, those I have to mark as x and the remaining min terms I have to mark as 0. Okay. Now, this don't care condition, okay, according to, I am going to take advantage of it now. Why I am going to take advantage? Because the uh, designer, okay, the designer while designing the circuit, I, it doesn't matter whether this is high or low, whether the, whether 
the mean term or uh, the output produced for this mean term is high or low. So now I can take advantage of it while simplifying my Boolean expression. Okay, wherever it is possible, or if if it is possible that if after considering this as one, I can form the maximum group of ones, then I'm going to consider it as one. Okay. If it is possible that uh, uh, a particular don't care condition is not uh, allowing me to group into a maximum number of ones, I can consider it as zero. Okay. So that is how. Let let us consider now. Let us uh, if if we look at this example, maybe you will understand it in a better way. So now I can find a quad here straight away. So let me form a quad. So now whatever is left is only one, one here. Okay. So again, there is a possibility of pair. Yes. But again, I have see whenever we are grouping ones, we have to be a little greedy. Pair is not enough when there is a quad possible. How the quad is possible? I don't see any ones here. But we know that. But I can consider these don't cares as ones. So if I consider these two as ones. I, this quad is possible. Yes? So if I consider this uh, don't care as ones, then this quad is possible. So that is what when I said we are going to take advantage of these don't cares. Wherever possible for grouping the, uh, or grouping ones into the maximum number of groups, then I am going to consider this don't care as ones. So now let me consider this. This is possible when I am considering these two don't cares as high or 1. So now this f will be equal to what is the prime implicant for this it is nothing but cd. What is the prime implicant for this is a dash b dash. So this is one way of grouping. Now, if I don't consider this, if I don't consider this quad, then I can have another uh, kind of grouping that is this. In that case, my uh, equation, my simplified equation is going to be this is nothing but CD. And for this quad, I have to identify this is uh, B dash is uh, losing its this. Then A dash, then we have B here. It is going to be A dash. D. So based on which don't care you are using for uh, as considering it as one, uh, when I consider this as one, these two automatically will be considered as zeros. If I consider these two as one, this will automatically considered as zero. So like this, whenever we have a, a specific mean terms mentioned under the don't care condition, what we have to do is we have to take an advantage of it wherever um, the maximum uh, it is falling under the maximum uh, grouping of ones i have to consider them as one the rest i have to consider as zero okay so here with this don't care condition uh, we are going to get two possibilities okay both are correct either i can construct my circuit using this boolean expression or using this boolean expression so that is all about the don't care condition. So whenever they are giving you the don't care uh, condition, they will be giving you two equation. One for the function, which is uh, the which are the mean terms giving you the high output, and which are the uh, mean terms which you have to put under the don't care condition. And this don't care we are mentioning using the x, not ne neither one nor zero. We have to represent them using x. And while grouping, either I can consider it as 1 or I can consider it as 0. So, we, uh, whichever don't care condition is falling under a maximum number of groups, uh, then I can consider it as 1. So, I hope it is clear to you. So, in this lecture, we have learned about four variable came up and how to group using uh, rotation method. And also, we have learned about what do you mean by essential prime implicant and non-essential prime implicants and also we have seen the example with the don't care condition thanks for listening to the video thank you